This is Jim Hendershot, and I'm, we're ready to uh, uh, listen to lecture number five, which is one of the most important lectures in the whole series. It's entitled Electric Machine Sizing, and this is a very important uh, set of instructions or slides for us to study together, because sizing of electrical machines is uh, one of the most important places or the important things concerned with your design because you need a place to start. Uh, machines are usually sized for rated torque capability or peak torque capability, not power. Even though you, you hear the word uh, a half horsepower, a five horsepower, a ten horsepower motor, that's a good way to describe one motor to another. But power is torque times some RPM. So to, to get to the details of how much power a motor is producing, you have to know what the speed is and, and the conversion of energy in the air gap from electromagnetic energy to mechanical work to be done is not in terms of power, but it's in terms of the torque produced. So, so uh, how do you size a machine and where do you start the output torque is proportional to the product of the rotor volume and the shear stress and we're going to look at a slide in a minute to see what shear stress is but uh, air gap stress is proportional to the product of the air gap electrical and magnetic loading the electrical loading is the current loading and the magnetic loading is the flux loading many induction motors and reluctant synchronous motors are four pole machines so most of the rotor volume is magnetically active the only part that isn't magnetic active in a four pole machine is the shaft itself so so one could rate motors based on torque as a function of the rotor volume as, as to how hard you're working the machine uh, and the uh, torque versus rotor by volume TRV is probably the a very convenient way to size induction motors and reluctant synchronous motors. However, for brushless motors or PM synchronous machines, they tend to have higher number of poles, eight poles or more. And some torquers even have a lot of poles and wind turbine, direct drive wind turbine permanent magnet generators can have uh, as many as a hundred poles or close to it or even more than a hundred poles depending how big they are because they go so low speed. So maybe the best sizing parameter for PM machines is the aircraft stress itself that doesn't take into account the entire volume because uh, a lot of the volume in a high pole count motor is not active. It's not magnetically active. It's just there to carry the the active part of the magnetic circuit. So the rating considerations that we should keep in mind when we're talking about sizing a machine are of course the output torque at the different speeds uh, rated and peak, the uh, air gap stress, the air gap flux density, the air gap current density, and of course the conductor current density, phase conductor current density, what type of enclosure is it, is, is it uh, uh, fitted into, totally enclosed, fan, cooled, open, drip, proof, and, and uh, so on. These are standard uh, acronyms or abbreviations for most standard NEMA and IEC motors. And what type of cooling is the motor going to be suggested to? Just natural convection, whatever whatever air is forced by the, the temperature of the... Uh, of the OD of the stator causing natural air flow by convection over the surface to take away the heat all the way to uh, forced liquid cooling and every possibility in between. The, uh, the continuous rating of the machine depends solely on how it's cooled. Uh, the duty cycle has a lot to do with how you rate the machine. Is it so put out a certain power level continuously or is it, is it intermittent or is it the motor a combination of both for example a traction motor has to put out a certain torque continuously uh, while traveling while the vehicle is going down the highway at 60 or 70 miles an hour uh, 
but during acceleration or going up a, uh, a grade, uh, a higher torque value is required, but it's not continuous. It's only for a short duration, a few seconds for acceleration, or maybe a few minutes while going up a grade. A, uh, a famous motor engineer of the past, M.G. Say, uh, wrote a book on the design and performance of AC machines. He published in London in 1970. Sorry, I don't have the ISBN number of that, but this uh, is a very good reference for a detailed study of the of the classical design analysis for electric machines that goes into detail about electric and magnetic loadings. Um, one of the, one of the one of the first things you have to decide, of course, is the number of poles. We'll get into that later, but uh, there's a definite relationship between the rotor and stator diameter as a function of number of poles. So, <laughs> it's been my experience that usually when you start out a new motor design, the one thing that you know about the dimensions is you're usually told what the maximum diameter of the stator can be or it could be the frame or the housing that the stator mounts in. One of the two defines the, the stator OD. If it's the frame, you can assume some frame thickness and come up with a max stator OD. So then the next thing you can do, as long as it's not a high-speed motor, and we'll cover that in a minute, but if it's a, a normal-speed motor, let's say, depending on its size, uh, you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 pole, motor that goes uh, a few thousand RPM maximum, why then uh, you would you could use this a chart like this that gives you a percentage of the rotor diameter to the stator diameter. And, and it, this is a chart that uh, I offer you to use to get started with, but anyone out there that works for a motor company, I encourage you to uh, uh, check with the diameters of everything you've got tooled, everything that's in production of the rotor diameter to the stator diameter versus the number of poles. And we'll talk more about such a study of your existing production later. But so, so if you know what the OD is, you can uh, decide how many poles you're going to have and then look at this chart and, and get your rotor diameter by some percentage like this. And then uh, then you you decide how you're going to size this. Are you going to size this machine based on torque versus the rotor volume, TRV, or are you going to size it based on the the uh, air gap shear stress? And here's what the air, air gap sh shear stress is. This circle here is, uh, represents a drum. This The length of this drum is the length of the uh, uh, rotor or the stator, whichever is the shortest of the two, because sometimes one overhangs the other. And, uh, and, uh, and this, this circle represents the center of the air gap between the rotor and the stator. It's, it's uh, defined by pi d. Right here you have pi times this diameter times l, which is the length, so that gives you the, the swept area and then we, if we if we take the torque that the motor puts out, and we divide it by d over two, which is the radius, we get a force, and and that force is a tangential force that's tangential to this swept air gap area, and you divide that by this area, and you're going to get either. Uh, kilonewtons per meter squared or you're going to get uh, uh, or you're going to get pounds per square inch and here's your here's your uh, uh, conversion here so now if you if you have a chart and I offer you a chart of uh, gap stress guidelines to go by so uh, if you know what the diameter is and you know how you're going to cool the machine you look on a chart like this and uh, see how what which which motor your which category of these that your motor falls into and pick a uh, 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 pound inch uh, gap stress pound per square inch pound force 
per square inch or newton kilonewton meters per square per, per that should be square meter not cubic meter that's a mistake there but anyway uh, for so this way you can solve go back to the slide before and solve for the length you could solve for length and uh, if you know what the torque is and you know what your accepted gap stress is you could solve for the length of the machine you got your diameter from that uh, chart based on the number of poles and uh, you pick something here based on uh, how you're going to cool the motor or, or its duty cycle or so on now uh, the other way to size a motor is based on the total ampere conductors in in the for circumference of the of the air gap as well it's another way to do it and uh, another way to size it is uh, is the uh, this is how you this slide shows you how to get the total air gap conductors uh, for the as a function of the gap circumference number of phases number of turns per phase the IMS RMS phase current and the diameter of the air gap and and uh, here's a chart of acceptable current densities in the in the copper wires the amps if you take the uh, rated current of the machine and you divide it by the uh, cross section of of each turn if you have multiple strands per turn you would use the total cross section per turn if it's five strands per turn you figure the cross section of one conductor multiplied times five and here you have a list of, of uh, amps per square millimeter amps per square inch a cross section for uh, motors that are either convection cooled fan cooled or liquid cooled the uh, a, a good number is uh, five you if, if it's a normal speed motor that doesn't have high iron losses then uh, uh, you start with uh, five amps per square millimeter which is about 3,000 amps per square inch if you go much over that you have to have some more serious cooling okay so here's some guidelines that are uh, different companies and different people have their own guidelines for these but uh, another way is to compare the uh, uh, motors is, uh, is, is try to size them based on magnetic air gap loading. The, the flux, the total flux in the gap is try to uh, have an air gap flux density in the range of 0.75 to 1 Tesla. Remember in, the, in the, one of the former lectures we talked about uh, assuming that an induction motor is between uh, 0.65 and 0.85 so this is all in that same range we'd love to get one tesla in the air gap uh, for all motors so you want to strive for as high as you can pretty tough to get it more than one tesla but uh, this is a desired place to start for induction machines as well as uh, reluctant synchronous npms and and to facilitate effective utilization of the air gap loading for machine sizing acceptable values must be available from measurements of existing machines that utilize similar methods of cooling with natural conduction forced air cooling or liquid cooling the same as the uh, chart we used here for uh, current density in the winding uh, that's the same for the flux density in the air gap so what what this all means is that uh, we, we need a list of guidelines for uh, based on cooling and so we're gonna I'll show you how to get some of those guidelines but one way is to uh, is to uh, try to gather some data about all the motors you've ever designed or all the motors that your company or other people that you know have designed and make a chart make a chart and calculate this data Calculate the air gap stress, the torque per rotor volume, the uh, the current density in a winding, and the and the uh, uh, electric gap loading, the magnetic gap loading. Figure out what all those values are for every motor you can find, and generate your own chart to use for future sizing. And make sure on each one you list, you identify the motor, you identify the rate of torque, the peak torque, and how it was cooled and all these uh, guideline values that uh, 
that uh, are based on a motor that you've designed or somebody's designed and built and shit. And uh, now, uh, in the case of a high-speed motor, we use a slightly different sizing method than the, the guidelines of flux density, current density, and uh, gap stress and uh, torque versus rotor volume. We have to base it on on uh, the, uh, the the tip speed of the rotor, because in any no matter what kind of a motor you have, if you're going to have a high speed, if you want to spin this thing at high speed, you got to make sure that uh, some mass of that rotor doesn't move at speed and cause the an unbalanced condition or a change in balance because any change in balance at high speed usually leads to a catastrophic failure. So use this little formula here to calculate what the tip speed is and uh, and and you can uh, do some calculations and come up your own guidelines but tip speeds of 75 meters per second uh, uh, you can easily maintain uh, uh, rotor retainment, particularly the ones with uh, permanent magnets on them, uh, at 100 meter, uh, up to 100 meters per second. But over that, you're going to need higher uh, strength retainment sleeves like carbon fiber sleeves. Under, under 75 meters per second, you probably don't need any retainment. But over 75 meters per second uh, up to 100 you can use uh, uh, alloy steel such as Inconel 718 that's been uh, work hardened and, and aged you can use 301 stainless you can use uh, titanium but all of those retainment sleeves over magnets will uh, cause uh, some eddy current heating in the rotor that you have to deal with in the design in the case of induction machines they're a little bit trickier because at high speed the the mass of the bars can uh, cause them to move and change the balance and if you have high enough forces on them you can actually force the slot openings opening and the bars could even uh, touch on the idea of the stator because they have small air gaps and that would be a, a colossal disaster so uh, uh, something has to be done to hold the the bars in the in the slots. It's not uncommon for high-speed uh, spindle motors for machine tool spindles, machining centers and milling machines, that uh, they actually use copper bars and they braze them in the slots so they don't move, so they're brazed right to the steel lamps. And now the end rings on a high-speed induction machine would uh, could, could have a alloy steel shrink sleeve over the OD to uh, give it some stability and keep any of the mass from moving. Uh, during high-speed operation, but permanent magnet brushless motors have to uh, have a retainment system over the magnets that they're surface mounted. If they're interior magnet motors, the uh, the design of the lamination gives natural retainment or retention for the magnets so they don't move. But uh, the thickness of those webs that retain the magnet, and we'll look at those in those later lectures when we're discussing uh, IPMs, those little web sections that are used to retain the integrity of the rotor during speed uh, reduces your torque because uh, flux is allowed to leak through there. Those become saturated. So, so uh, for high-speed machines, you base the uh, rotor diameter on the tip speed that you can retain the rotor at. And then uh, you kind of have to build your stator around that. It's very tough. If, if you have an OD of the stator limitation as well, then you, the only variable you have left once you determine what the maximum uh, rotor diameter is based on tip speed, the, the only other thing you can do is adjust the length of the machine. So sometimes high-speed machines wind up being long and skinny. Uh, if the specification uh, places no limits on the state of OD, then the torque per rotor volume can be used, uh, except real high pole count number of brushless machines. But uh, there, there's, there's kind of a general practices for uh, motor design for 
diameter to length ratio of the rotors. A, a very good place to start is to make the rotor length the same length, the same dimension as the diameter. That's a good place to start. But uh, uh, fine tuning of your final design, you're going to have to adjust the length if the diameter is fixed. But uh, you'll typically see rotor uh, lengths be half the rotor diameter, two times longer, sometimes three times longer. The uh, continuous duty current density, uh, like at the current density, if you you got your rotor design, you got your stator design, and 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 you only have so much slot depth for the copper and the teeth in the stator. If you remember what our stator lamb looks like, it's got teeth in there, to carry the flux to the yoke. So. Uh, if you wind up with too high a current density in the conductors and you can't make the stator OD any larger so you can make the slots deeper, what you have to do is make the machine longer. You have to increase the length and increasing the length gives you more flux because no matter uh, if you use magnets, no matter what kind of a machine it is, the longer the motor is, the more flux you're going to have because you're going to keep the same flux density in the air gap. So that's going to give you more flux. So uh, with more flux, you need fewer turns. So that means you can use fewer turns per coil. And with fewer turns with the same slot area, you can increase the cross section of each conductor or add extra conductors in parallel. Therefore, your current density goes down to an acceptable value. Now, if low, as I said before on the previous slide, if low inertia is a requirement, then uh, the length to diameter ratio is optimized based on the inertia requirements and not on anything else. The, the uh, uh, inertia is a function of the diameter squared, but first order related to the length. Uh, another way to... Uh, to uh, size motors, kind of the easy way or the cheating way, or or a way to use as a sanity check for your own designs is to uh, is to consult other manufacturers' designs. Uh, it's it's well known that AC induction motors have ohmic losses in the rotor, ohmic losses due to the current flowing in the rotor bars. So you have I squared R losses there. And, and those losses lower the continuous ratings as compared to SR and, uh, and reluctant synchronous machines and permanent magnet machines because these other, these latter three machines have no conductors there, so there's no ohmic losses in the rotors. Sure, they can, some of them have iron losses, but they don't have any copper losses. Uh, so, but, but aside from that, and assuming they're all the same, you can assume they're all the same for uh, sizing purposes. There are companies out there who sell motor parts, or they call them rotor elements, rotors and stators. And they're all designed and built and fully tested and specced out, and they rate their performance in these charts in two classes, European uh, duty cycle classes, S1 and S3. Uh, S1 means continuous duty, and S3 means uh, partial duty. And I, I'm not sure what its rating is, but I, I don't know if it's 40% duty cycle, or I'm not sure what it is. You can look it up. But uh, uh, a, a, one of the companies that uh, makes these kind of things, a very famous, well-known company with high-quality, high-torque-density products called ATE, and they're uh, in Germany, not too far from Munich, and uh, they, they also they provide on their website uh, catalog data that lists all the dimensions of the rotors and stators for induction motors and permanent magnet brushless motors for different number of poles. And they also list their, the power ratings of these machines based on, on how they're cooled. They, they give you data without cooling and with liquid cooling. So, these dimensional data lists are very useful to use to uh, compare your own motor designs or use for sizing to do a motor from scratch. You know, pick their, uh, pick a, uh, if you have a, a, an OD requirement, look in their chart and uh, 
look in their chart for uh, the, num the right number of poles, two, four, six, eight poles, and the right stator OD and see what they pick for a rotor OD and how long the machine is for uh, a certain power rating and the cooling and use their dimensions. Start your design with them. This is a very good way to, to do it. You can't go too far wrong. You're, it's kind of like copying. It's kind of like cheating. If you don't like doing that, then design your own own, and then you use these tables as a backup or a uh, as as a sanity check. Other motor companies who publish similar performance data is a U.S. company called Ruland Electric, and there's a very good one in Switzerland called E und A. Und is a German word for and. A e und A. E und A. I don't know where they got that name, but it's a company in Switzerland on the border from Germany, close to the Black Forest. And they all have similar data to this. And this is ATE's four-pole data. And you see, you see up here, what you have is the, uh, uh, this is a chart of four-pole motors. And, uh, and here's your power ratings. And uh, the, the speed is all, uh, the speed is all based on the number of poles, obviously. But uh, here's 3,000, 6,000, 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000 RPM. And here's your power ratings. And these last digits means the number of poles. This is the core length, uh, the core length and the diameter. You see the stator diameter is 160. For this group, 170. 180, 200, and 200 millimeters. Then, uh, uh, then here you have uh, 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 another list here. You get this thing to work. And uh, this this gives you this is a this is a list of the same things, but with all the dimensions, the diameters, the stator diameter. The air gap, the rotor diameter, the the maximum ID you can have in the in the lamination. So that's where you get your rotor volumes. And you could you could take this list, for example, and calculate all those parameters that we did and make a make a chart for 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 power, horsepower, and number of poles, and uh, and power levels to see what the uh, the air gap stress is or torque per rotor volume. You could generate those those charts for your own sizing from this data. Here's six pole data, same thing for six pole, and here's the same data for eight pole data. And you can look up and find this for uh, I, these are for induction motors, but you can find these same tables for the permanent magnet machine as well. It's the same vendor and the other two I listed, but the. Uh, uh, Quite frankly, you know, if you're if you if you're a, a got a deadline, you got to get a motor done, motor design. You, this is really the best place to start is to to see what all these machine these are all machine tool spindle motors is what they are. These are not NEMA frame motors. Their uh, their their elements are rotor and stator parts that are used in uh, milling machines and lathes and grinding machines because that's where they sell these. And the auto industry. In, in Europe, in Germany, when they're going to, uh, to uh, do experimental work on traction vehicles for railroads or for uh, off-road earth movers, they, they start off going to these companies and buying rotor and stator sets, standard stuff. This is what they start with for their design. So that concludes this lecture on sizing.